Hello, and welcome to the 181st episode of Gaming Talk. On this episode, I'm going to be discussing and giving my thoughts on Resident Evil 6. Let's get into it. I'm going to start right off by saying that this is the worst Resident Evil video game experience that I have ever had. Up to this point, I've played the remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3, I've also played Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8 Village, Revelations, and Revelations 2. And those were all really good experiences in my opinion. But, then I had to go out on a limb and try the black sheep of the Resident Evil franchise. And I definitely know why RE6 is the black sheep of the Resident Evil franchise. Now I'm not going to go into the detail of the story itself, but I will tell you that this game has four different campaigns, and some of those campaigns have intersection points. You have a campaign with Leon and Helena, you have one with Chris and Piers, you have one with Jake and Sherry, and one with Ada Wong. Yes, like with RE5, this game does have a heavy focus on co-op since pretty much everyone does have somebody with them, and yes, even Ada Wong has a co-op partner for her, simply known as Agent. Now because of this, there's a lot of intersections within the missions where doors that require two people to open are areas where you have to boost a person up, and they then grab you and pull you up, stuff like that. But also, as I was saying, sometimes you're playing one campaign and other characters will show up. For example, when you play Chris's campaign, Sherry and Jake will show up in it very early in the first chapter of their actual campaign. (laughs) Getting into my actual thoughts on RE6 here, none of this is going to be good. The first and most obvious is that none of the game is scary. Now, most of the RE games don't scare me, but at least ones like the RE2 and 3 remakes try to have a darker and scarier atmosphere and to me has better suited enemies to fit that atmosphere. In RE6 we're dealing with the C virus and it turns people into B.O.W.s that are called Javo. And for the most part these are just people who shoot you and at times will grow a big infected arm or turn into exploding guys or heavy armor guys that you have to shoot from behind and so on. Most of the time, they're just people shooting at you. Not only is this not remotely scary, but it's it's a game that I find hard to take seriously because of the over-the-top nature of everything. A big negative of this game for me is some of the things don't control that great. Aiming in this game is the worst. Yes, I know that compared to RE5, I should be happy that I can move and shoot. However, there are still issues. (laughs) Something annoying is that you cannot fire your guns without right-clicking the mouse to zoom in first. Because if you don't, you'll just sit there and do melee attacks, which is really annoying to me. To go with that, when you are zoomed in and aiming, Moving from one target to another is so slow that it is frustrating. Especially when there are quite a few fast moving enemies and this slow move to aim makes it difficult to shoot them quickly. However, do not even get me started on the sniper rifles. Okay, let me tell you. If you play any third or first person shooter, most sniper rifles They'll have a bit of sh- of shake when you are scoped in. And I'm okay with that. You know, Call of Duty does it, for example. But in RE6, when you scope in, there is an unbelievable, over-the-top amount of scope shake that is definitely not at all realistic. And outside of the one part of Chris's campaign, I chose not to use any of the sniper rifles ever in this game because of that. And yes, you can say, but there are skill points that negate this. No, there isn't. I have every single skill point unlocked and most of them equipped. None of it helps with the sniper scope shake. So don't come at me with the skill point argument. 
because it's not a thing. Now, the other thing aside from the controls that fights the player that isn't an enemy is the camera itself. Now, given that most campaigns involve two characters and things, like doors are interactable by both characters, so that means that one person is always on the right side and one is always on the left side. So why is this important and what am I getting at? Well, for example, when I did Jake and Sherry's campaign, I decided to play as Sherry because you get the option of who you want to be. And when I started that campaign, uh, every time I'd open a two-person door or come out of a cutscene, the camera would be set to over the left shoulder. Now, I don't know about you, but when I play a third-person shooter, I prefer the camera be over the right shoulder. So I press tab, or not tab, caps, and that switches it. But, again, every time I interact with a two-person door as Sherry, or transition out of cutscene to gameplay, it always gets reset back to over the left shoulder, and I find that really annoying to have to continually press caps to switch the camera back because the game won't just leave it alone. <laughs> the camera also made an entire section of the fifth chapter of Chris's campaign actually impossible. It's the part where there's a massive BOW and you have to do an escape sequence and while doing it the camera switches views and angles all the time, more often than not. This made it hard to see where I was going. And because this re section requires 100% precision to pass it, I would and did fail over and over so many times that I just quit Chris's campaign and moved on to Jake and Sherry's campaign. And I don't care that I did that. The minor things that are left uh, the first is that this game has way too many cutscenes. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that there is a cutscene like every two to five minutes or less. And I mean that. It almost feels like they didn't want me to play the game but watch a movie with bits of gameplay here and there. There's also a lot of quick time events as well. I didn't find that many of them all that bad but they are there and there's a lot of them. So what do we have here? A game where the general aiming is stupidly slow. You have to zoom to aim or else you're going to do melee attacks. The sniper scope sway is ridiculous which makes snipers unusable. The camera is annoying and makes an entire section of Chris's campaign impossible to complete. There are far too many cutscenes and quick time events. Resident Evil 6 is a bad game and I cannot recommend and will never recommend anyone play this game even if you're a fan of the RE franchise like I am. But that's going to do it for this episode so if you like this kind of content feel free to subscribe. Thank you for listening and goodbye.